95 Reasons isn't a protest. It's not about being angry. In fact, it's about being very sorrowful over not being what Jesus intended the church to be. I know that as you hear these words, it may not be the face that said them or hurt you, but we're here to stand in their place and to ask forgiveness. Forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us for our pride in nearly everything. For not shouting out the inequality of 30,000 children dying every day from lack of clean water and malnourishment. Forgive us for not passing the baton of faith and leadership to the next generation. For not going and giving, but instead demanding that you come and see. Being ignorant of our own faith while criticizing so many other religions which we also know so little about. For forgetting that in the sight of God, we are all poor in spirit. Forgive us for our lack of belief in grace. Forgive us for forgetting the lonely, guilty, and confused. For our foolishness in imitating culture trends instead of looking to God for original creativity. For handing leadership in churches to people of wealth instead of people of faith. Forgive us. Forgive us for forgetting the kingdom of God and building ridiculous church kingdoms. For not uniting our congregations for the greater good of this city. Forgive us. Forgive us. For not being real with God, with ourselves, and with others. For removing all the mystery of Christ and his gospel. Forgive us for spiritual manipulation used by church leaders. For calling ourselves Christians and looking nothing like Christ. For leaving behind the elderly, the sick, and the mentally ill. For demanding that you be like us, instead of all of us being more like Jesus. For betraying children, pushing them aside, not valuing them, and sometimes even abusing them. Forgive us. Forgive us for. Our lack of compassion, soul unlike the Lord. Not trusting the power of the Word of God and the Holy Spirit for demanding a voice in the community, but not being willing to contribute to the overall good of the community. Forgive us for making war instead of making peace and loving enemies like St. Francis did, turning churches into fortresses you can't figure out how to get into. Forgive us. Forgive us for not turning the other cheek and instead retaliating. For forsaking our role as light of the world and not bringing color to life. Not using the resources that we have in a wise and generous way. Forgive us for our eagerness to be so right, yet not loving everyone. Not using wealth and power to help free the oppressed and enslaved children in the world. Forgive us for making church only for insiders. Forgive us for using the Bible to condemn those around us and not examining our own guilty hearts. Knowing what we're against, but forgetting what we're for. For inoculating people with a dead, moralistic Christianity instead of infecting the world with a viral, potent, and powerful love of Jesus. Forgive us for writing off those in prison. For letting the availability of money determine our steps instead of the voice of God. Forgive us for commercial televangelists preaching health, wealth, and fame. Being ashamed and trying to put that shame on others. Or settling into comfort instead of sacrificing for others. Wearing out, demoralizing, and destroying pastors and their families. Forgive us. Forgive us for segregating by color, gender, age, and dividing up the body of Christ. Favoritism in starting churches in wealthy communities and ignoring impoverished communities. Forgive us for forgetting that all people matter to God, not just the ones who are like us. For failing to remember the widows and orphans. For our lack of hospitality and generosity. For grasping for authority instead of walking in the meekness of true spiritual authority. For our lack of freedom when Christ came for freedom. For asserting ourselves instead of walking humbly with God. For living by sight instead of living by faith, not looking past outward appearances. Forgive us.
Forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us for using financial resources on the most ridiculous and ludicrous things. Forgive us for mudslinging government officials instead of praying for them as God desires us to. For Americanizing the gospel from world-shaking new life to minor improvements made to the old life. For disobeying Jesus by hating our enemies instead of loving our enemies. Forgive us for thinking and acting like we know all the answers. Forgive us for making converts instead of making Christ followers. For eagerness to battle other religions and not demonstrate the love of God. Forgive us for forgetting the urgency of the message of Jesus. Forgive us for forsaking the powerful practice of simply reading the Bible, the Word of God. Forsaking our children and youth and not including them in the adult world to mentor them. For prayerlessness and forsaking the service of prayer for you and for the city. Forgive us for our hypocritical show of faith on Sunday and lack of faith on Monday. Taking political positions instead of standing for the kingdom of heaven. Being ashamed of the foolishness of the cross. Living for only the material things and forgetting that there is a heaven. Not living fully surrendered to God, but asking everyone else to fully surrender their lives. Forgive us. Forgive us. For not living a sacrificial life like our Savior. For raising a generation to abandon their communities and culture. For demanding belief like a to-do list before welcoming and accepting you. Forgive us for loving tradition more than loving God or loving you. Forgive us for presenting God as our personal servant instead of presenting ourselves as His. For being too busy with church activities to notice the activity of God. For forsaking our role as salt of the earth and not bringing flavor to life. Forgive us for giving up on you when God hasn't. For attending to our own pleasures instead of the urgent needs of those around us. Forgive us for trying to convince people to believe without ever mentioning Jesus, the cross, and all that it holds. Turning our backs on God by despairing instead of burning with living hope. Forgive us for preaching moralism instead of the life-altering story of Jesus. Forgive us for laziness on every part of our faith. Forgive us for pointing a finger at you when we should have been pointing a finger at ourselves. Forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us for applying truth everywhere but to our own lives. Our joyless lives and copying an attitude that others should be like us. Our preaching news that wasn't good news. For demanding uniformity and not enjoying diverseness and creativity. Forgive us for no longer seeking out the lost but instead developing programs to help us feel better about ourselves. Forgive us for not modeling the acceptance of God in Christ. For not listening to you or to God. For treating the Sermon on the Mount as pretty sayings instead of the constitution of our faith we live by. For peddling and selling faith in stores to make a profit. Forgive us for looking to corporate board leadership instead of to spiritual shepherds and spiritual leadership. Forgive us for our small, limiting view of God that is far less than as He revealed Himself in creation and Scripture. Trying to be the Holy Spirit. Trying to do His job of convicting. For turning worship into a showcase for talented people instead of adoration for an awesome God. For joining the world and marginalizing people who are unlike us. Always talking about justification by the cross but depending on our own self-righteousness. For not welcoming the prodigal home like our extravagant Father in Heaven would. Forgive us for failing to love like God loves.